What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Within Me, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror. I am your host, Eric, and each week I'm going to rate and review a new movie or TV show that falls within the horror genre. Now, this is a show for horror fans hosted by a horror fan who's just here to share my opinions and experiences with my fellow horror friends in hopes that you may gain something new to watch or not watch, and really just talk about all things related to this beautifully dark and spooky world that we call horror. So if this sounds like a show for you, stick around, we're going to have a lot of fun. So let's get started. Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of The Horror Within Me. I'm your host, Eric, and this week's episode is episode 48, and is going to be talking about the 2023 film, Knock at the Cabin by M. Night Shyamalan. Now, this is not the first M. Night Shyamalan movie that I have reviewed. Um, I think the first one I did so far was old, and that got mixed reviews as well. So this, I'm interested to dive into this one because I, before I even watched the movie, before I even read reviews to prepare for this week's episode, I talked to people in my circle that either loved it or hated it or didn't ever want to see it, and I automatically always wanted to see this movie because a it looked intriguing to me and it looked entertaining to me but two also because it had the lead characters were two gay males and they had a a a baby and i just um was very interested to see how that was used in media because it's not always used the way that it should be used but before we get into the whole episode um i want to give a little update on everything so it's been a while so we didn't have an episode last week last week was easter i thought about trying to get this in in time but my life has been so 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 crazy since then i recently have not only just a a new part-time job i've recently just been offered and accepted a new full-time job that i'll be starting um next month so there's a lot going on i'm very very busy but i'm not too busy to still uh love my horror people and and try to do this but with those changes and one of the other things that has changed and is going to be down for a while are video episodes on the YouTube channel. Um, the platform I was using um, is not working properly for me and my computer right now. So doing the recording and the video aspect and getting that done is going to be on hold. Um, I don't want to say permanently, but I don't know when the video episodes will be back up. So if there's anyone that watches this, please, uh, I will post something if, on the um, social channels that the YouTube is down. So you can still listen to the episodes every week, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Well, now that the formalities are out of the way and all that fun stuff, we're going to jump right into it. Episode 48, Knock at the Cabin. We're going to start off with the synopsis from IMDb, which is, while vacationing, a girl and her parents are taken hostage by armed strangers who demand that the family make a choice to avert the apocalypse. The movie is starring Jonathan Groff as Eric, Ben Aldridge as Andrew, Kristen Coy as Wen, David Bautista as Leonard, Nikki Amuka Bird as Sabrina, Abby Quinn as Adrian, and Rupert Grint as Redmond. The movie was released on February 3rd, 2023, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, produced by M. Night Shyamalan, Mark Beanstock, Ashwin Rahan, written, written by M. Night Shyamalan, Steve Desmond, and Michael Sherman. It has a rating of R with a runtime of one hour and 40 minutes. The genre on IMDb is a horror mystery thriller. The tagline for Knock at the Cabin is save your family or save humanity, make the choice. And the IMDb rating is a 6.1 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes are tomato meter of 67% and an audience score of 63%. All right, so let's jump back up to that cast real quick because I I just want to get in there. Jonathan Groff, I know mostly from Glee. I believe he was Rachel's uh, ends up being Rachel Berry's husband or something like that. But yeah, um, and Dave Bautista, um, I know him mostly uh, from Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy. But the one that always stuck out when I first saw the trailer, aside from Guardians of the Galaxy, dude, was Rupert Grint. If you don't recognize the name. He is the actor that played in Harry Potter. Um, oh my God, I'm drawing such a blank on who he is. He's the main guy. Uh, Ron Weasley. 
<laughs> yeah, Ron freaking Weasley stars in Knock at the Cabin, guys. And as one of the quote unquote villain people that come to the cabin. So it was interesting to see him. Obviously, he's a grown man at this point. I haven't seen him in anything else that much. Um, so for me to see him in that role, I think he did a great job. It didn't bother me that he was, you know, Ron from Harry Potter. I mean, that was ages ago. And of course, this person needs to continue to act and, and do different roles. So I thought it was cool to see him in a different kind of way. Um, it was released not that long ago. So again, this is keeping on theme with trying to um, keep up with the newer movies. And I personally like M. Night Shyamalan, even if I don't like his work all the way, like everything, like I wasn't a fan of the happening. I wasn't a fan of the village per se. I I remembered some of it. And so I'm not going to sit here and say that everything he does is a hit and that I've seen everything either. Um, I haven't seen glass or unbreakable. So I need to catch up on them because I heard they were actually really good. And maybe we can jump into that whole, um, you know, world of that because it kind of blends with, I believe, Glass is a unbreakable and split kind of, you know, co- cohesive project. Um, but before we move on to get into the reviews, we have to do this week's terrifying trivia question. <laughs> this week's terrifying trivia question is. The movie, Knock at the Cabin, is based on the book, The Cabin at the End of the World, which was written by who? No, it's a little bit of a tongue twister, so I'm going to read it again. The movie, Knock at the Cabin, is based on the book, The Cabin at the End of the World, which was written by who? Stick around to the end of this week's episode to get the answer. All right, here we go. This is going to be the part that I always have the most fun with. Uh, let's dive right in. Top three best reviews on IMDb for Knock at the Cabin by M. Night Shyamalan. The first review is titled, I loved Knock at the Cabin. I'm the third person to give a 10. Before I read it, let's talk about the title. I'm the third person to give a 10. This was written in the day it was released. So, I mean, but are you counting how many people? I mean, that was an odd thing to put in the title. Anyway, here's a review. M. Night Shyamalan's the most disturbing movie yet, and regardless what anyone thinks of his films, he gets riveting performances out of the actors. The only film of his that is truly rubbish is The Happening, and the only other one of his that is R-rated. Anyways, about Knock at the Cabin, it's so smoothly written, engaging, disturbing, memorable, and brilliant apocalypse story. I'm sure my reviewer will get mixed vibes, which is fair. I'm happy to be one of the odd ones out. The group of menacing characters were outstanding especially Dave Bautista, and so were the three leads, especially Ben Aldridge, Jonathan Groff, and Kristen Coy, were great throughout. I'm one of the few that appreciates the way things play out. Interesting review. Um, It just jumbled in my way, so let me see how I can pick through this a little bit. Um, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's Shyamalan's most disturbing movie yet, uh, but I appreciate the effort in trying to do that. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Yeah, I don't know about anybody else, but my allergies are all over the place with the weather changes over here in Jersey. It's up and down, up and down. Today's like 80-something degrees. Anyway, um, but I do agree that the film gets – his films get riveting performances out of the actors. This is no exception. Um, everyone does an amazing job in this movie. For the people that are in it, we have, what, like eight characters all together, seven characters that we get. And they all did, like, such a great job. Um also agree the only thing that's rubbish is the happening. I just don't understand what was going on in that movie, and I'm not going to – this is not the time to review it, but agree. Um, I didn't realize that this was R-rated and the only other R-rated film. I know he does a lot of PG films, which is fine, PG-13 films, but it's interesting that that's a little fun fact that I learned reading this review, and I didn't actually fact check, so I could be, still be wrong. Um I agree that it is written, engaging, disturbing, memorable, and brilliant. I do I do agree with all of that. Um, and yeah, your review will get mixed vibes, I'm sure, because it's such a mixed, you know, 
movie on what people I think I told someone that I saw the movie that I work with and they were like no god I never want to see that like just very very adamantly against it and this is a fellow horror friend so you know this is just one of those things that you love or hate I don't know if there's any in between I haven't found an in between review yet we're gonna move on to the next review which is titled don't fall for bad review bombing it's great for all the true M. Night Shyamalan fans out there, this is, in my honest opinion, one of his best in recent years. You know, we keep watching, waiting for another village or devil, even signs. And Servant, of course, which is wonderful. This is it. Knock at the Cabin is fun, funny, very suspenseful, and highly entertaining. I was on the edge of my seat pretty much the entire time and loved the story which I knew nothing about prior to viewing. Wow, the book must be amazing. The requisite Shyamalan cameo was hilarious. Dave Bautista was so entertaining, as were the other cabin visitors and small girl. I will include this among my M. Night favorites. Um, okay, how do I have to pick it up? Um, I do agree with their opinion that this is one of his best in recent years. Absolutely, I, I agree with that. Um... I don't need to run and waiting for another village. Like, that's another, that's another opinion thing. I wasn't waiting for another anything of his. I just wanted, I just wanted to hope that it was not a flop like the happening. Is that just a low bar for me? Um, <clears throat> it is very suspenseful. I actually also was on the edge of my seat pretty much the entire time watching this film. Not really sure why. I mean, I, I know why, but it's not like it just, it does that to you. It, it keeps you there in my opinion. Um, I agree that the book must also be amazing. And I miss the Shyamalan cameo. Um, what I was, what I find weird about this review is at the end of it where it says the other cabin visitors and small girl. What? Like why? The, that's just strange to me because it says that Dave, like, I guess they didn't want to write the other p- actors names, but it could have just been like, you could have just said the other actors were also entertaining not cabin visitors and small girl small girl like that's just i don't know it's weird weird to me um (laughs) but great review i agree um and don't fall for bad review bombing i also agree you have to be able to pick through what you think is someone just talking shit as opposed to someone who watched it and just didn't like it you got to be able to filter through your your reviews if you're a person that does the reviews and you should be because you're listening to this podcast as someone who gives reviews on movies for the last best review for knock at the cabin on imdb is titled a gripping and different story i haven't seen a movie with such a gripping and different subject in a long time i don't understand why some viewers are bored while watching this movie the movie has definitely managed to become one of the films that i can recommend Rather than classic apocalyptic movies, the subject is explained in depth instead of action and effects. It can frustrate and it can frustrate the expectations of people who expect too much action and visual effects. The intro, development, and conclusion parts of the movie are very well constructed. People who say that they predict the ending should know that the end of such films is already known. So I picked this one because I liked the title first. It caught my attention. A gripping and different story, which I agree. It's different and also not different. Um, Because it's a very classic tale on certain aspects of it. And it's, it's just, it's just, it's just weaved very differently into how we um, view Shyamalan apocalypse. Like, is it real? Is this not real? What is going on here? It, you know, it, it, I think that is the appeal to me of the movie. Um, I also don't know why some viewers were bored, but I can if you if you are only here for high, you know, this is something that you have to, this is a, a, a movie that is going to have you thinking. You have to pay attention to. It's not something that's throwing flashing lights at you to keep you busy and loud sounds to keep you engaged. If you're that kind of viewer, you probably would be bored watching this movie. Um, I don't know what they mean by people who say that they predict the ending should know that the end of such films is already known. I mean, some people say they predicted the film. I, 
I can say that me personally, I predicted a different ending for the film. So I just will leave it at that without giving any spoilers. I just predicted it differently. But those are the top three best reviews for Knock at the Cabin. We're going to get into the (laughs) top three worst reviews on IMDb for Knock at the Cabin. And fittingly so, the first titled review is called A Knock in the Head. (laughs) Here we go. Let's face it at this point. Shyamalan had been a hack for over a decade. This movie isn't esoteric. It's not misunderstood. And it's not unique. The only thing unique is the fact that it was produced rather than simply throwing this pathetic screenplay into a furnace. Truthfully, outside of Sixth Sense and Split, Shyamalan can simply not write a decent fi- movie. You'll see the same fanboys that somehow gave old a 10 singing the praises of this poorly written script. If you want to waste two hours of your life, fight off sleeping and waste $50 to, pr- to prove you're right, be my guest. It was more fulfilling staying home and watching Spongebob reruns. It's just really hard to read because it's so fucking typoed and just the grammar is just terrible. Like it says let's face it at this point, but it's let's face comma it at this point comma Shyamalan is spelled wrong. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, truthfully, outside is out. is spelled like that. Shyamalan again is misspelled. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Um, so please, 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 please spell check. I, I'm looking, literally have this in a Word document, copy and paste it on a Word document to read for you guys. And it's telling me the typo. So please, you know, people that want to write reviews, especially bad reviews, and you want to come off like you're doing an intelligent review. Here's my advice. Write it in a Word document. That way, when you're illiterate, It can help you write it and then you can kind of like click it and it'll auto correct for you. And then like when you post it on there, you can try to pass a little bit better as an educated individual of society before just trash on the Internet talking about other people's work of art. And you can't write a fucking paragraph. Um, (laughs) So I don't obviously agree with this review. Um, It had been a hack for over a decade. Why the fuck are you watching his films then? This movie came out this past February, a couple months ago. He's, if you felt that he's been a hack for over 10 years, why even go and see this movie? You saw this movie. You wrote this review on February 8th. This movie came out February 3rd. So you were like excited to go and see it like opening weekend. Were you like, I don't understand what you expected. If you thought he was a hack for over a decade, why even go? And then you'll see the same fanboys that somehow gave old a 10. But if you're not a fan of him, why did you go? That's what I don't understand. Did you actually see it? Because there's nothing in here about actually about the movie. It's it's really just a, it's a trash review. You have no plot points. You have nothing in here. So did you actually go and see the movie, or did you just write a fucking review that's just poorly written with with uh, misspells and grammar errors? Second, where the fuck are you living that? You wasted $50 to see this movie. I've never spent $50 on a movie ticket or rented a movie for $50. Now, if you're counting snacks, that's a personal preference. Not everyone needs to fucking spend money on snacks to go see a movie. Not everyone's snacking like that. Again, where's the money aspect coming in that it was $50? And if you're watching more fun, staying home, watching SpongeBob reruns, clearly your taste is SpongeBob cartoons with very little, like, you're in an elementary um, mindset of intelligence, so you would not be able to keep up with Knock at the Cabin, and that's probably what your problem is. So you can stick to Nick Jr. reruns of shows that children watch and then leave the adult movies to us, and that's all I'm going to say to you. I'm going to move on to the next <laughs> bad review, which is titled, Shyamalan, Stop Making Movies. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, my God. How this ridiculous C-grade movie got financed is beyond me. Is there a race to the bottom for M. Night Shyamalan? Four folks show up at a gay couple's cabin to inform them they must choose someone to sacrifice in their family. In quotations, or in parentheses, it says, they have a little girl. 
or else all of humanity will die. The whole film is them talking with this couple. There is nothing scary, suspenseful, thought-provoking, or interesting in this film. I multitask in order to watch this garbage. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made it to the end. I felt nothing. Not one emotion, other than shock at this appalling excuse of a film. You're homophobic. I'm just going to start off with that. You're fucking homophobic. Second of all, C-grade movie. Yeah, no. Do you understand how that works? Do you understand what classifies the... No. Anyway. Is there a race to the bottom for M. Night Shyamalan? Again, why are you... Did you actually watch the movie? Or are you just... Are you just hating? Because this is why I feel like you're homophobic and you didn't watch the movie because you put four folks show up at a gay couple's cabin. Okay. They show up at a gay couple's cabin and in parentheses you put, they have a little girl. And instead of saying they have four folks show up to a family's cabin to inform them they must choose someone to sacrifice in their family. Do you know what I mean? And then the whole film is them talking with this couple. Literally, that your little sentence of what the film is is what you're you can see in the trailer. You put nothing else in there, so I feel like you saw the trailer, saw that it featured two gay people and with a kid, and that pissed you off. So you want to put people off and not see the film. I'm not really sure because you put nothing in here. You said nothing is scary, suspenseful, thought provoking, or interesting in this film. But you're not putting anything else in there. You didn't even say anything about like the M. Night Shyamalan twist or if like, you put nothing in there. You just talk shit about it. And I'm just going to call you a homophobe. And then if you find this fucking review one day and you know that this is you that wrote this piece of shit review, come to me and prove me wrong that you aren't. I'm just curious. I'm going to go on <laughs> to the last review for the worst reviews on. IMDb for Knock at the Cabin, called Don't Waste Your Money. Don't watch unless, unless you want to fall asleep. Terrible, terrible, sucks, horrible. Don't watch this movie was the worst movie I have ever watched in my life. It made zero sense, and I want it to die. A, p- <laughs> a person next to me fell asleep, and she slept through the entire movie and didn't watch the entire thing. Don't waste your money. I would rather watch a soccer game it was that wrinkle. I would rather watch a woman's JV basketball game than this. I could make a better TikTok movie than this. I would rather sit down and talk to my girlfriend's parents for a full two hours instead of watching this movie. L movie. Fuck, that was so hard to read. It is so hard to read because it's just, okay, you are an inbred, homophobic, probably racist person. And also misogynistic and probably all of the terrible things that people say about these type of men. What in the fuck in hell is this this review? What? You literally, I'm telling you, you didn't watch this movie. I can guarantee this person just rage wrote a review. (laughs) They saw this fucking film came out because this was written February 4th. They saw this film came out. I'm telling you right now, every little fucking clue in this review that you can try to pick out of this garbage ass review is they are not supportive of gay people in any way. This person did not pay money to go see, knock at the fucking cabin. They saw the trailer and Rage wrote a review on IMDb with their little keyboard. I mean, it is apparent the rage that they had as you read it. It's just typed so angrily and it's it's nerve wracking. And then like the other things like, okay, I would rather watch a J a women's JV basketball game. Like what's, why is that bad? What's wrong with women's JV basketball? Like you're giving away your fucking nasty ass, fucking misogynistic ass shit. I could make a better TikTok. Okay. I would rather talk to my girlfriend's parents for a full two hours. We don't know you, your girlfriend or her parents. We don't know. They can be wonderful people. Why is it that, is an issue. Do you see what I mean? Like this review, this is the reason people should not, people should have to pay to write this fucking kind of shit on the internet. And then there's other people out there like, Oh my God, somebody wrote this. I can't see this movie. Who's reading this and thinking that please don't, don't take any 
any any this is no credit to this film at all there's not even a real thing about the film it's literally just a bunch of words that they threw on the screen terrible terrible sucks horrible uh what the fuck i wanted to die so what that oh my god i had to end with this one because it just it's just it's that crazy to me and that is this week's <laughs> top three best and worst imdb review. IMDB reviews on Knock at the Cabin. I'm just going to leave it there. God rest. Whatever. Whatever you want to say. Go do something else with your life. Let's move on to my my favorite part, which is what I actually thought of the movie. What I liked, what I didn't like, and my rating and final review. All right. So here we go. What I liked most about Knock at the Cabin. This is going to be a shocker to you guys. I guarantee you're not going to ever think I've said this. The main characters were a gay couple with a daughter. I'm just kidding. You probably knew that I was going to say that. But honestly, here's the thing. I really liked that we were getting something in the horror genre that featured two main characters that were a gay couple that I really thought that was something that not a lot of studios, big budgets were doing this way yet. You know, I thought that was fun. I was very interested. And I like that they had given them the, 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 a child as well. Um, Fun fact, me and my husband are going to be doing, um, we are going to start the adoption process ourselves. So we're very excited. I'm excited. So wish us luck. Um, what I liked the least about it, um, it was difficult to think of it, but then I realized what I really didn't like the least about, what I liked the least about the movie was the lack of twist that you expect from a Shyamalan movie. So like, there's not a lot of room for, without trying to spoil, there's not, like, the sixth sense blew my fucking mind at the end, right? Certain things blow your mind. I didn't like there was like one or two options that this movie could like take the direction. Like it was either one or two ways that it would be ending. So it wasn't a lot. It wasn't like there was a third hidden option we never seen coming. Like that doesn't happen. And I think that would is what disappointed me a little bit the most. But that's that. Before we get into my final rating, we have to go back and answer terrifying trivia. So the question again was, the movie is based on the book, The Cabin at the End of the World, which was written by who? And the answer is Paul Tremblay. And I actually read um, A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, and it was a very good book, so I recommend that. And I didn't know that he wrote this, and that it was a book, so I'm very curious. I'm going to go back and buy it. I have like seven books that I have right now that I'm reading. I haven't read. So I... I will be a while before I get there, but obviously the cabinet at the end of the world and one, I'm very interested on how that is different than the movie. So my rating for knock at the cabin, I had to think of like, what am I going to use? That's going to be different. And then I thought about it. And if you saw, there's something in the movie. So in the movie, this is not a spoiler. In the beginning, a little girl is catching grasshoppers. So I'm going to use grasshopper, grasshoppers. And my rating is 7 out of 10 grasshoppers. It's not a bad rating. And my final review is as follow. Knock at the Cabin not only took two gay characters and gave them the lead, it did so in a way that didn't make them a joke as so many other movies have. The plot takes you back to the age-old question, if you had to choose between your family or the world, who would you choose? All of the actors gave A-plus performances, and although there is not a lot of action, there is a lot of suspense. Shyamalan has given us another masterpiece in cinema storytelling. That is my final review. I completely agree with that. I didn't give it a 10 out of 10 because there were flaws and it wasn't the best, but I think that it deserved a 7 out of 10, and I agree with my review. I think, like, I, you know, I put in this review, the age-old question, like, I know growing up as kids, we used to say, like, okay, if you had to, you know, choose out of your two friends, who would you pick? It's such a difficult thing to do. And I think the movie did a very good way of doing that and then adding everything else into it. It was very nicely done. So have I convinced you to watch Knock at the Cabin? And without, if you have the streaming service, Peacock, Knock at the Cabin is now streaming for free on Peacock. So you don't have to spend the $50 like that reviewer said. You can watch it at home for free and waste two hours if you feel that way. But go ahead, watch Knock at the Cabin. Let me know on my social channels what you thought about it. And that concludes this week's episode. Stick around. For next week, we're going to be doing a brand new episode again. And that's it. Have fun, everybody. Bye. Thanks again for joining me on this week's episode of The Horror Within Me. If you enjoyed this episode, 
please rate and review wherever you listen to your podcast. And for even more Horror Within Me content, visit my link tree at L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Horror Within Me for links to the website, my Patreon, and all of my social channels to stay up to date on all the spooky stuff that we're doing. So be safe. And until next time, stay spooky.